Hello, hello, Annabelle and Sarah here. Welcome back to Navigating the Shift. Uh, today we are still not interested in politics and so we are keeping with the timeless topics. Sometimes we do timely, sometimes timeless. And this time we thought we'd look at um, influences that come to us, whether it's, uh, whether it's light or dark or too much light or too much dark. Um, and you, you had a place to start, didn't you, with that, Sarah? Right. The other part of that is how much do we need to do the spiritual work ourselves? How much is it appropriate to allow help from our spiritual or extraterrestrial friends or soul families? What's that balance there? So what I saw was an article and in it they were discussing that the demiurge, which is like the archons, which are energetic overlords, I guess you would say, non-physical beings, they had created a duality illusion on this in this reality of darkness and false light. And I think what they were saying was, I mean, that didn't feel completely true to me because that was just too depressing. And, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So the idea that what they're saying is the idea is that when you it, to get, keep the people in the program, but thinking they're going toward the light and fighting the darkness. But the examples, and he was talking about Ascended Masters and Archangel Michael and various other sources of information, and the example kind of uh, channeled message he was warning against was, you know, dear ones, we're here with you. We're, we're taking care of you. There's all, everything you need is on this side. Don't worry. We're going to make sure the wonderful thing happens. We've got you on this. We're going to rescue you. We're going to, you know, Ashtar is going to beam, beam you up. I remember my dad <laughs> used to say, God, Ashtar, beam me up. He was just so desperate to get beamed up. <laughs> um, and the idea that they were presenting was that that meant that people weren't doing the work because they were going, oh, I'm just going to say, oh, I don't have to do anything because I'm being taken care of and they're going to come rescue me. And that, that is a certain percentage of the New Age teachings. We're doing a lot of that stuff, what I call the special words, you know, the, the Edita Special Highest Illuminati, not Illuminati, Highest Galactic Council, Lion's Gate, mm. Portal of Divin Divine Influence. Or, Diamond you know, rays and things like that, yeah. 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 Um, and there was, you know, a fair amount of oh, you're blessed children and we're here for you and you don't have to do anything. Because we we both have been looking at this. Both of us have had this feeling recently of just not being productive. We don't want to go and do the work. I mean, not the 3D work. And also, well, yeah, we're doing the spiritual work, but just not the 3D work. I mean, ma trying to make myself clean the house has gotten so hard. <laughs> I know. And yeah. I'm just really happy just sitting very still all by myself in, yeah. in quiet yeah. yeah, with nothing going on. Yeah. So I'm wondering about this, the, the dim, this fake, false light kind of thing. <clears throat> There's a balance, I reckon, between it. Because if, uh, if you've lived a life where you have worked really, really hard and you're trying to sustain yourself on your own, you're not good at picking up help, asking for help from other people. So you've made your life a whole lot more difficult than it actually had to be. I'm, t I'm speaking from personal experience here. Um, Me too. That, that to get somebody to say to you, it's okay, things are all right. There's a guaranteed happy ending at this. We promise you, just relax. That um, then it's beneficial, right? It's good. You do actually need to have some time off when you've been doing all that work, whether it's physical work or whether it's the spiritual work, half of which you don't even know is happening. But it's changing you. You're developing. You're um, becoming more aware of your own emotions and how they push you around in life so that you can pick up on it and go, this isn't working. I've got to change it. Or this isn't working. I cannot change it. So I've got to learn to simply accept it and acknowledge it, and then I'll be able to move on from it. You know, all those kind of lessons, which are really hard, because we've fallen into a pattern that we were taught as children, then that's a lot of work. And then so to stop and, and go, it, it's okay to not do anything right now, is, is a really useful thing. However, there are plenty of other people who are so reliant on all those, all those messages of, hey, sit back, relax, we've got you. Um, means that they they don't necessarily evolve any further because they really aren't any doing any more work. They're not. It's it's like uh, 
for example, a guy, I, uh, I can't remember what the conversation was now. It was just on Facebook or something. He says, oh, we don't need to worry about all the, you know, the uh, like polluting of the planet and stuff because, you know, Jesus is coming. He'll sort it out. Um, didn't you know the second coming of Christ? And I'm, I'm like, no, that's not what it was meant. But I said, you seriously going to just sit there on the fence and do nothing at all and expect somebody else to do it for you? He goes, yeah. So I thought that's that's an example of the kind of new age, the results from a lot of oh, that new age stuff, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it is. And there's also, we're just speaking to the topic of pollution, for instance, there's also ways where those topics have been controlled and distorted and um, to make money, like the, the climate change thing. In 80, what, 1979 or 87, you know, we had 15 years before the poles both melted and all of this was going to happen. And, you know, it, it, the story keeps happening on and on and on. And I just recently watched a video, which I'll link below, from Suspicious Observers explaining why the climate model that these scientists use is not correct. Because they are not looking at a huge number of the uh, climate climate forcing topics, the things that affect climate. So they're set with, like he said, here's the three that they look at and here's the 25 that really affect the climate. Mm. And because they don't look at that as being part of the, the cosmic rays coming in and other things that affect climate, uh, they uh, uh, put that, say, okay, well, that must be man, man, man-made effects. And then, of course, everybody's screaming climate change and they want to tax us. And, you know, especially the United States, we've got to pay a ton of money. And we're also guilty about our carbon footprints, you know, and it's not the carbon dioxide. Now, that being said, the climate is changing. It's just not because of our carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide has actually greened the planet. There are more trees now than there were. And that's happened historically. I saw, uh, I read... I guess I read, I can't remember where I read it, but they did uh, some analysis using Google Earth and determined there was like 15 to 20% more green growth on the planet worth worldwide than there was 20 years ago. That's surprising. I may, have the, I may have those numbers not quite right, but historically when carbon dioxide goes up, plants grow more because that's what they take in to grow. And then, of course... You were talking about pollution, and then the pollution is part of, it is a problem. And I also believe that extraterrestrials do help clean stuff up. Mm. They're already doing it. It's those cigar-shaped ones, I think, wasn't it? That were meant to be doing a lot of cleaning the, the atmosphere and that kind of thing. Yeah, I remember seeing some like long tubular clouds that just yeah. sort of roll through the sky, right? Right. And, and I was like, what are those clouds doing? And they're like, oh, we're just cleaning up a little bit here. I'm like, okay, thanks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's what we were looking, we're, we're thinking of. And what is it? What, what's our part? What, what should we be taking action on and be worried about and doing stuff with? And what do, is not really on our plates? We cannot control climate change. That's a, the whole, every single planet in the solar system is warming up right now. Right. It's but there's, there's but pollution wise, the there is plenty of things that we can turn around and say to people, say to corporations, look what you're doing here. This needs to be changed. I do not give a damn about carbon credits. Forget that. It's, that's just the stupidest thing I've ever, ever heard of that you're going to pay money. Um, no, 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 that's no, just clean it up, just sort it out, you know, let's get these new technologies that have been suppressed for such a long time just to protect Bingo. your industry. We it's time to switch out of that. And uh, so the awesome. reality is the change that needs to come isn't learning how to be cleaner with fossil fuels or coal or gas or solar power, it's the release of the zero point energy systems that. Um, Tesla invented, right? Yes. And other people have, and they keep putting them away. Once the deep state is out of power and all these technologies are being released, we can clean up the air, we can stop 
polluting. Mm. We'll, they have ways to clean the, the ocean, the plastics and things out of the ocean. It's true, I believe, that all this stuff is possible, and it's already been done to a certain extent. Uh, my understanding was that Fukushima could have been a whole lot worse mm. if they didn't control some of that radiation. Mm. Mm. But where is that balance? I mean, and, and we've talked about the event before, and I've had so many personal experiences with it. I, I feel it. I know it. I've been to the new earth in my cosmic travels and I and my dreams. And I know what it feels like. I, you know, I know how the gravity is different. It's a, it's like it's like the law, the physics laws of physics are different. I don't know how that is. But and I've read other people saying the same thing uh, after, you know, and I experienced it first. And then other people are coming back and saying they had the similar experiences, like lots and lots of people. So I think it's going to happen. And. There's a big war going on between the light and the dark, and I think it is the light and the dark and not the dark and the false light. <laughs> but should I go for that one? Yeah. Uh, there, there's, but, so, but, there's so many people. I think there's people that are try, trying to become sources of information and they start to put out stuff, whether it matches what's true or not, just to simply be authoritative. And of course, they get if they're authoritative, then people go, oh, well, they must be. They must know what they're talking about because they're so confident. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy um, for people to put out things like that. And then if they can, or if you've got some sort of conspiracy in there where you put a number of these people spread out around the world, let's have five of them, and they're all given the same message to put out, that everyone goes, well, that compares with that one, compares with that, so therefore it must be truth. We, we've said this over and over on this channel, but coming back to your own truth is the only way, the only way. And I know that feeling, like you're saying, Sarah, when you, you, you absolutely know that something is correct and then somebody will come along with something that makes it look like it's total bollocks and, mm -hmm. you, and you doubt. And, and, but then the more you look into it, the more you go, it just cannot possibly be bollocks. It absolutely must be right. It feels right. It resonates. It's not just wishful thinking. These things must come to pass. And there's a certain way, I think, I feel, that there's not a lot of stuff we can do yet. My experience of my dream, dreams and visions of after the event was that a whole lot of memories came in of what my job was. Me too. Right? Yeah. And I, and I read somewhere that people are in their sleep. They're off on these ships that some of the people are going to be taken to and getting ready to organize the families and where they're going to put them and doing practice runs and things like that. And that resonated just totally true with me. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yep, that's it. And I've and heard then, of people, you know, running, people running those medical pods that will, um, whether they're using light or sound, to basically clean up the DNA of somebody and, and cure all their health problems. Um, and, the, and I've heard of people going, that's, that's my job. I've just got to wait till they give me the pod and then I have to set up in my area and then I'm going to be the one that runs it and runs the little bit of clinic. Um, and there cool. again, and that's what's lovely about that is that it's, uh, it appears to be a small job. It's not asking you to be the great leader of millions of people. It's a little job that's local that you know that you can do once you've got the technology and that's your job. And if that person loves doing that kind of thing, it's the perfect job for them. It's not about ego by the time we get there. It's not about having the bigger job or being in charge of more people like it has been in the rat race of the 3D. It's about finding your job. And I, I believe that too. We def I definitely know that there's something there. And time and time again, I keep getting this message, just wait. <laughs> yes, me too. Don't worry. Just wait. Yeah. It's coming. But meanwhile, yeah. how long are we waiting for? We don't know. Oh, so, my God. You, you thought it would be somewhere within two years. Messages I've had, it's definitely before 2025. So it's maximum five mm. years. Mm. However, we cannot sit here and not clean our house for five years. There's things that have to oh, be done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's things please, that have to be done. Please. Truly, <laughs> we have to do it. I mean, maybe your inland revenue department's about to be closed down. Lucky you. I don't know how long it's going to be before Australia is, is closed down and something replaces it or if it will be replaced. If we have, I don't know if we're tied up in the same issues that you have. I don't know. Um, I don't either. No. But the, the, or when the new money system's coming online or how that will affect. So I heard one thing, was it yesterday actually, about the reason Trump is trying to get people into as many jobs as possible so that when the correction happens, when the changeover happens, 
that there are less people that will be affected, meaning the unemployed people are going to be buggered no matter what happens. So the less unemployed people there are, the better. Now, to me, that seems uh, like... I don't understand that. Why, why would the unemployed people... Uh, I think that, well, I'm going to take a guess and say that if we move, you guys move to a new currency, you get rid of the Fed, you go back to your gold-backed dollar, which is we've already found proof of is going through Congress at the moment, um, that people that already have money in the bank or have money um, in the stock market or in, in gold or have money, have any, some, some, some form, form of assets, will be okay because it will be converted to the new currency. Oh, I see what you're saying. Whereas people who are unemployed and have nothing in the bank account, then they're still going to have nothing in the bank account. And it okay, may, so may take a while before the distribution starts to even out. It might take a while for that to happen. Um, but I don't know about – I'm sure that Trump is not trying to get people employed just for that reason. I mean, it's, it's good for his – it's more, he's more likely to get voted back in as president for his second term. Um, lots and lots of levels to why things are happening the way they are. Yeah, and people earning salary is going to be better than tiny amount of unemployment benefit anyway. I can't see that being a bad thing. No, no, and, and the way it just brings down your whole energy too. So one of the things that I was looking at of, you know, should I be do doing more? Is it okay to just be being? And, you know, there was there was this message of, it's like um, saying positive affirmations when you don't actually believe them is just a waste of time, totally right? Because your subconscious is the one that's doing it. So the same way as uh, go, even even taking that next step of saying, you know, I want to have this done and taking the first step. I'm taking some action, universe. That doesn't work if your frequency doesn't match where you're what you're trying to create or manifest right so it's really where you where you're at how you feel on the inside mm. that that makes the difference because it it's lie. all your unconscious mind right and it doesn't believe your conscious lines lies like i have a lovely red ferrari no it's like <laughs> <laughs> We got rid of that one years ago with the husband. With it, we got rid of that and the husband too. <laughs> and he took the Ferrari with him too. <laughs> oh, I didn't want it. <laughs> it. It hurt too much to push the clutch down with my sciatica. I had it was like ah, oh! <laughs> really hard, heavy clutch. I can imagine people watching this going, "Oh, poor Sarah." <laughs> I do, Paul, Sarah. Yes, well, that's gone. <laughs> but the, yeah. the point is, getting into the vibe, and and the vibe. If we if we can learn to do that stronger, you manifest things much faster anyway. So, but getting into that, you, you can't just vibe, go. Oh, right. well, let's just turn that around. Well, no. If you've got a great imagination, that is very helpful. And although at school you were taught that imagination was very annoying and not helpful at all and pay attention and listen to these facts while we give you these facts, which were half of which are correct. Yeah, that's right. Daydreamers are, the, are the, the way of the future, I believe. They're the ones that will make all the difference in the world where you are faced with, mm, let's say you're faced with an invasion and then the children who still have their imagination go, Oh, what if there's an even bigger ship comes along and beats up all the bad UFO <laughs> invasion? Oh, yeah. And they are the ones that manifest an alternative reality, whereas all the rest of us sit there going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> because our movies have taught us to do that over all these years. Like those horror movies with a girl going into a haunted, you know, not a haunted house, but a, a house where there's a baddie. <laughs> and she locks herself in the room and goes, oh. Because that's what you're taught to do, be helpless and be scared. Whereas it'll be the, the ones with imagination that will bring out total different ideas that none of us had even thought of. They're, they're the I key. Was, I, was, I was a kid who daydreamed, but I didn't get caught. Because <laughs> for clever. one thing, I was, I, it was easy for me to learn the stuff. I'm, I was smart and all this stuff was pretty easy. So I didn't have to do 5,000 practices to get it. But I also have this thing in my head and I don't know how I developed it, but I can be totally daydreaming and not listening. And somebody says, well, Sarah, and my, I'll hear a playback of the last like few sentences or some last sentence that they said and the question they asked me. So I could pretend like it was actually paying attention. It works really well. I've done, 
I, I when I first figured out consciously that I that I was doing that, I think it was in sixth grade, and I thought. I don't think I should tell anybody. I don't think I should tell any adults that I can do this. <laughs> very, very handy. Yeah. So that, you know, I would just say, don't worry if, if you're not feeling like doing a lot and being productive, go with it, but don't use that time to watch TV. Hmm. Do it to meditate, do it to go into your imagination. I mean, that's what's, I, I like doing that, just, you know, lying around in, in a very quiet space and just dreaming and imagining going various places. That's, that's a lot of fun for me. <laughs> it is. I think you're right. Tuning into yourself as to what's the right thing to do. Prioritizing. Now, as, as mothers, both of us have learned to prioritize in a way that we never would have imagined when we, we didn't have children. Um, you, you seriously have to do it very, very harshly. And I think... Um, all of us need to start learning to do that. Do I really need to to do these things? What is the most important things to do right now? Connecting with um, others, being in relation, you know, in relationships with the people around you is important. Um, but also making sure if you've got a very busy schedule to set aside time for yourself is the most pro- important, the highest priority. Make sure you so have that time. So difficult when you say. have young children, but both of us kids are grown up enough that we can do that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So it's a balance. It's a balance. But you've got to tune into yourself as to what's the right thing. And if you suddenly find that you've been lazy for a few days, and I don't like using the word lazy because it's such a judgment as seen as a bad thing. But if you've been looking after yourself and nurturing yourself for a few days and suddenly you get the urge that now's the time to clean the house and it would be quite fun if we put some cool music on and got into it, then yeah. do it. Do it now because it may not happen again in another few days <laughs> or weeks. Oh, the, the, there's another balance that I think is worth looking at is that working on yourself versus not working on yourself. Be, like do working on your stuff because what happens is we get so addicted to working on our stuff, we end up taking in being sensitive the way we are, a lot of us, taking in other people's stuff and working on it as if it's ours. And then we're spending the whole time processing things and clearing negative emotions and all of that stuff when it's not really about you. You know, there's that, oh, I can just, you know, that's not mine. I don't Mm. need to work on myself all the time. It's really, I've noticed this a lot with clients that it's very hard to not be on themselves people who are dedicated to it it's really hard to go oh I don't you know I'm not gonna deal with that my boss is having a bad day or you know that's somebody else's problem I don't need to work on that it's uh, that's a lesson in itself isn't it mm, very good yes lesson. All right. lots of them all right well Thank you. that's it for today see you next week bye bye bye